Welcome to Green Sky Hill Indian United Methodist Church in the Tabernacle in the Woods on a day that is not yet raining, so we're really thankful for that. Uh, talking to some of our farmers, we, we hope the rain comes at just the right time, uh, but it's nice for us that we can sit outside and not worry about a storm this morning. There are plenty of storms that cause us to be discouraged and sometimes even uh, lose hope. And this morning, as we conclude the fourth uh, in the series, Quest, Travel as a Spiritual Act, we are returning home. And uh, whenever I do a, a marriage meeting with a couple that I'm getting ready to, to officiate their wedding ceremony, um, I talk with them about their relationship and uh, we do a, a, a profile for the couple so they can see in graphic form what they already know about themselves. And um, one of the things that we always talk about is how, um, you know, difficult times come, but if you are focused on your friendship, focused on your relationship, do a couple things that uh, Kath and I share with couples that uh, make for a long, happy marriage, um, then at least when those storms come, uh, you won't be completely weatherproof, but you'll, you'll be able to weather the storm. And knowing, in our case, as followers of Christ, that the steadfast love of God never ceases. It just never stops. And we're going to focus on that this morning. Um, returning home uh, reminded me of, of uh, one of the personality profiles in these couple relationships where uh, each partner is measured on how well they do with change. And someone who struggles with change will be really low on the, on the graph and their partner might be way up here, an adrenaline junkie who just loves everything new. The person who's lower on that score almost always loves to be home. <laughs> they, love, they love to return home, their, their space, their physical space, what they define as home for them um, uh, is a place of anchoring and security and comfort. And that's where we're going this morning. We're going to that place within the great mystery where even if one of the hurricanes is bearing down on us, literally, we have the opportunity to find comfort in the steadfast love of the creator of all things. So that's where we're headed. We just heard a prelude from around the world. Uh, where, where was your music from this morning, Sharon? Malaysia. Oh, you said you said Hawaii at one oh, point, right? Hawaii, yeah. Nigeria. Okay. Thank you for that. And now, our sister Peggy is going to ring the bell for us as we enter into worship. Let us worship in spirit and in truth. told Sharon when we were getting ready that I immediately regretted a long sleeve shirt this morning. Sometimes when we have traveled away from the familiar, we return and find the familiar holds more than we had noticed before. Our eyes, now trained to wonder and appreciate, behold the place we left afresh. Our quest has brought us right round again, and we're returning home. Sing this with me. Coming home we set our seeing To hold on to deeper meaning Loving life and making home a place for all the creation and its beings. Let's sing again. Coming home we set our seed to hold on to deeper meaning loving life and making home a place for all 
creation and its beings. As we begin and as we now bring our series on travel to a close, we contemplate what it means to return home. After stretching our spirits and our love to include more of the glorious creation and its peoples, we return to a home that will never be the same to us. We have returned with guests, memories of new friends and new perspectives. Perhaps we also return with new convictions to be more active and loving citizens of humanity right where we reside. Jesus says, abide in me, and follows that up with the commandment to love one another. The beauty of travel as a spiritual act is as Rick Steves says, that our prized souvenirs are the strands of different cultures we decide to knit into our own character. I hope during our four weeks together you've had a few new strands to knit into your being. And we get to continue to have that traveling spirit right here at home. Let's sing again. Coming home we set our seeing To hold on to deeper meaning Loving life and making home A place for all the creation and its beings. That's what we mean in our three priorities here at Green Sky Hill. We say we intend to be a radically welcoming place for all. That every human, every four-legged, every creature would feel at home here at Green Sky Hill. Will you pray with me? Let's pray this prayer in unison. Sojourning God, your spirit exists everywhere on every path, inviting us to move with curiosity and compassion toward each other. May we see that our home paths are unfamiliar paths for someone else. With renewed compassion, open our hearts for hospitality so that in our welcoming, we will grow together in peace, expand our chances for love, and deepen understanding right where we are. Nudge and guide us, we pray. Amen. So Sharon and I had wonderful plans to sing this in Spanish and in English, except she can't play and sing Spanish at the same time, and I don't sing Spanish as well as Sharon does. So do we? Have, our first question is, do we have any fluent Spanish-speaking people among us. We'll work on that, y'all. <laughs> what do you consider fluent? <laughs> if you can pronounce most of the words properly. Well, I think Sharon uh, has that covered. She does have some Spanish experience, including traveling. So she's going to read the Spanish lyric for us instead of us trying to sing it. And then she'll play the melody as we sing the same verses in English. Yes. Cuando el pobre nada tiene y aún reparte, cuando el hombre pasa sed y agua no está, cuando el levo a su hermano fortalece, va Dios mismo en nuestro mismo caminar, va Dios mismo en nuestro mismo caminar. Cuando sufre un hombre y logra consue consuelo, Cuando espera y no se cansa de esperar. Cuando amamos, aunque el odio nos rodee. Va Dios, mismos, va Dios mismo en nuestro mismo caminar. Va Dios mismo en nuestro mismo caminar. Okay, so you probably have that already, but here are the English <laughs> versions of those words. And this, we're going to sing the first two verses of this hymn as our opening hymn. Uh, we'll know it really well by the time we get to the end of our service together where we'll, we will sing the last two verses. And you'll, I hope, see the connection as we, uh, even last week, in our uh, reflection on the encounter. Remember, we started in the series with leaving home, and then we talked about the encounter of actually entering into relationship with people from different cultures and places and languages. 
And then last week we reflected on that in the reflection. And um, we talked about our need to experience the suffering, to enter into the suffering of others so that we can uh, know them and their experience and love them more deeply. And that's where this song will take us. So we did play through once so we can hear the melody. be impressed with Sharon Osterhaus just for her counting ability, <laughs> let, let alone her ability to read music. Let's, sing, let's try to sing that together. When the poor ones who have nothing share with strangers. Poor ones who have nothing share with strangers. When the thirsty water give unto us all. actually in our hymnal if you want to try to follow the music so that's that's helpful and now let's that's very helpful let's try the second verse yes 434 434 sorry 434 all right when at last all those who suffer find their comfort when they hope though seems hopelessness when we love though hate at time seems all around us then we know that God still goes that road with us then we know that God still goes that road with us I think that I was talking with Sharon also about, I think that's a very literal translation and they didn't change the sentence structure much so that we get awkward sentences like goes that road with us. But it's also poetic and that's what we're gonna be thinking about. And as we reflect on the steadfast love of God, one of the things that that means is that whatever road we are going, <laughs> God goes with us. That love goes with us. Will you pray this prayer of confession with me? Uh, first, let me do a little introduction. The shore of the Sea of Galilee was the place where Jesus called the disciples away from their familiar lives and roles into an adventure, a journey that would change their lives and our world forever. After his crucifixion, the disciples returned there to the water, to what they know. But can you imagine? It would never be the same again. And it was there that the resurrected Jesus met them again. He offered them comfort through hospitality, a meal of fish on the shoreline. He meets us even now at these waters. Let us pray. Namada. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts and have not loved our neighbors as ourselves through what we have done and left undone. 
Forgive us when we create boundaries of us and them, and assume scarcity where you offer abundance. Guide us as we seek to turn around toward greater love. Let us lead us to travel in your ways. Amen. I'll add to that prayer for forgiveness. Forgive us when we return to the familiar in fear rather than promise. Forgive us when we turn inward rather than become the hosts you call us to be. Guide us as we seek to turn round toward greater love. Lead us to travel in your ways. Know this, there is a spring of life that flows throughout creation and is available to all, to all of us, when we need it most. In the midst of our fear, Jesus calls us to be a new creation. He is con our constant companion, inviting us to reach out to one another, traveling together toward the kingdom of love. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the, In the name, name of Jesus Christ, Christ you, are you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ is with you and also, and also with, with you. you. I invite you to not only wave to your neighbor, but please uh, fill out the registration booklet as it comes around this morning and let us know you were with us. And we wave to our friends online all over the state <laughs> and all over the world. Hi, friends. At this time, Pastor Sarah has some unpacking to do for us. I think, I think she asked last week if we could sing the whole song sometime, so we're going to sing the last verse to begin her message, and when she's all done with the repeat after me prayer, we'll sing all the verses of our, uh, our spiritual sea shanty. <laughs> we are a blessed and a pilgrim people. celebrating part of a being part of just a big wide wonderful world and we've talked about that in a lot of different ways and the good news is we are not done traveling even though our, our traveling series is coming to an end um, this is just the beginning for us and whether we travel to faraway places or we have new experiences here right where we are we can continue to travel and in physical um, traveling or even just in our own minds. And you know, sometimes a great way to travel is to read a new book. When you reread re one of your favorites, a new chapter. Um, but you know, never, never stop traveling, never stop looking for that adventure. The, our song this week um, told us that love, to love our journey and love our homeland and that love is the kingdom of God. And anytime we welcome others, we've created more love and that is the world that god wants us to build so this week i'm wondering kind of what's in our backpack because our first week we sang about salt and we ended up finding salt in our backpack and the second week we sang about light and we found a light in our backpack and helped us to light our way and to be a light in the world and last week we sang about seeds we thought we were going to find seeds but we found cheese and that was amazing um in this week we're singing about love. So what what could we what could we find? Let's listen to that that verse again, um, and we're gonna sing that together again, and just see if we can maybe kind of get inspired as to what we might find in our backpack this morning. So just the verse this time. Just the verse. Yeah. We are a blessed and a pilgrim people, bound for the kingdom of God. 
Love our journey and love our homeland. Love is the kingdom of God. So how would we find love? We could show our love and our friendship in a lot of different ways. You know, around the world, people show love and give gifts of love to their friends in different ways. Some people give yellow roses to friends. Has anybody ever heard of that, of gifting a yellow rose to a friend? Um, some people will give like a blue um, like lapis stone or um, even like a jade cactus. Maybe we have some of those in here. Hopefully I'm not going to have a cactus. No? What do I... I'm not seeing any of those things. Gosh, what? Oh, here's something. What is, oh, it scared me for a second. You know what these are. We made these a couple of weeks ago. These are friendship, friendship bracelets. bracelets. How awesome. Look at all of these beautiful colors and all of the knots, all of the time that it takes to put all of these together. You know, all of these different colors can represent different wonderful relationships that we can build and the different people and when you think about the travels that we have had even just on in our past four weeks and we think about all of the differences that we have when you put all of those things together if each of those people and differences and experiences are wrapped into one corded bracelet like this how beautiful are those colors when they come together and how beautiful are our relationships when when we're tied together and you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and give anybody who would like one here this morning. I've got eight bracelets, and I'm happy to gift those to you as friends. And I know that some of you had taken some of the thread home a few weeks ago and were making bracelets. And I hope that that's something that you continue to enjoy doing and you can give to a friend as well. But, you know, these friendship bracelets have been around for maybe thousands of years. And we've kind of talked about where, maybe where they came from and different meanings that they have. But you know, when you when you look at these bracelets, I just want you to think about every knot that is made. You know, and I think about that when I crochet or when I knit. And gosh, it takes a long time for me because I'm not very fast. But I've seen some of those ladies that just really get going and I don't know how they do it, but you know, they touch every stitch. And just like these bracelets, they touch every knot. And um, I think it's really important for us to remember how each of those individual knots come together and create such a beautiful, wonderful friendship. So let's go ahead and pray. We're going to do our repeat after me prayer, and we're going to pray for traveling well. And I hope that you have a lot of chances in your life to pray this prayer and to continue that traveling mindset, even if it's just right in your own home, or even if you just come here and in this beautiful space and, and let your mind just take you somewhere else and experience and enjoy all that God has given us. We've got our packs. We've got our packs. We've got our load. We've got, We've got our load. load. We're ready now. We're ready, ready now to hit the road. To hit the, the road. Be with us, God. Be, Be with us, us, God. Around the bend. Around, Around the, the bend. bend. Help us to make. Help us to make. Strangers friends. Strangers friends. friends. Amen. 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 Well, let's keep traveling and let's sing all four of those verses together and thinking as we hear the salt and we hear the light and we hear the seeds or the cheese and we hear um you know the love that we can remember the places that we've traveled and that feeling of connected um connected love through god sarah's messages always make me hungry <laughs> <laughs> and a 
to start a new series and we'll surprise you with that in our Facebook announcement uh, later this week if not this afternoon and we already have an Advent uh, series uh, planned uh, that is all about home it's all about what we're celebrating today so we're excited to share that with you as we move into uh, new seasons the council and I are still praying and working diligently to get us all together inside in a safe way uh, and I just honestly can't tell you when that's going to be yet. Uh, so please keep praying with us. Uh, uh, help us with new ideas that you discover in any research that you come across. Um, for instance, if there was a way for us to do the ultraviolet uh, air purification in our hall, uh, then we could probably safely be in the hall. But I haven't found an inexpensive or even affordable way to do that yet. Uh, but let's keep looking, uh, because the day will come, it really will come, when we don't have to worry about the pandemic continuing to make everybody sick. It doesn't look like that day is coming soon. Um, so we need to be prepared between now and then to love our neighbors as we have been. Our first reading this morning is a reminder of the, the root of our existence that makes it possible for us to not live in fear, even of storms and pandemics. It's from Psalm 36, verses 5 through 9. And I invite you just to hear this good news. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and, give, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Let's celebrate that with music for the journey from your Ojibwe hymnal. We're singing number three, Blessed Be the Dear Uniting Love, and we'll sing all the verses. Number three, Blessed Be the Dear Uniting Love.
thinking about the ways that we love our neighbor as Jesus loves us and how we do that during the pandemic. I, I don't know if you saw the announcement from Anne and Kelly, uh, Dan's partner and daughter, that um, because of uncertain safety, uh, they're going to postpone Dan's memorial service from the 2nd of October until a later date. And they, they don't know the date of that yet, but they will keep us posted. And honestly, every, every time I turn into the drive, I have so many memories of Dan. Uh, I'm, I'm memorializing him in my heart every day and thinking about um, the loss that his family is experiencing. In a few minutes, um, I'm going to invite us to pray our prayer song again uh, at following the sermon and the scripture reading. And um, I'd like you to be thinking about those things that we want to lift up while we're, while we're singing our prayer. Uh, I, will, um, I'm, I am stepping in. We are stepping in. Uh, with whom and with what circumstances do we all need to be stepping in right now? And when we get to that part of our service together, I'm gonna to invite you to call out from where you're seated those things that we wanna make sure and those people that we wanna make sure that we are remembering this morning. And we'll hold those all in our heart as we sing our prayer song. Our second scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter. Um, and I'm going to uh, read verses nine through 12 from first the New Revised Standard Version and then uh, from our lovely new translation, the First Nations Version, uh, to hear the word of God in these two uh, translations. As my Abba has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. You, you'll probably remember that Abba is a Greek equivalent to what us Southerners might say as daddy. Uh, it's an affectionate, uh, uh, fatherly term, Abba. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, Jesus said, just as I have kept my Abba's commandments and abide in their love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And I won't ask for a show of hands for who in this exact moment in history has complete joy. It is there, available to us in the steadfast love of God, the joy that is so complete that it overcomes all of our hardships, it's there. The hardships don't usually stop. The hardnesses don't usually come to an immediate end. But the complete joy of knowing that you are completely loved is available to us. In the new uh, translation, the First Nations version, these verses sound like this. In the same way the Father loves me, Jesus said to his first followers and now to us, I have loved you. Never stop walking this road of love. By doing what the Father has told me, I have remained in his love. As you walk in my ways, my love will remain in you. I am saying this so your hearts will be filled with the same joy I have. To walk the road with me, you must love each other in the same way I have loved you. Our invitation is to walk the good road with, with Jesus and to love our neighbors as Jesus loves the Father, as the Father loves him, as, as we are all loved by Abba. We've been on this journey during these four weeks of quest, travel as a spiritual act. We left home, we encountered others, we reflected on that encounter, and this morning we're returning home. I wanna share with you at the beginning of my thoughts on these texts, uh, one of two videos that we will conclude our series with from Rick Steves, who has been um, guiding us uh, through this series. On my very first trip, Tammy, to when I was just a 14-year-old kid, my parents took me to see the relatives in Norway. And I was not only ethnocentric, I was egocentric. I mean, as you can imagine, a 14-year-old kid who had never been anywhere. And I was in a park 
I'll never, this is, I just so, it's so interesting to think back on it. I was in a park behind the palace in Oslo, it's the Frogner Park, and it was filled with families out on a sunny afternoon. And I, I remember my parents were just loving me inexplicably. And I just, I knew my mom and dad didn't have a lot of money. They had never been to Europe before. They had compromised hugely in their travels in order to take their son along and expose me to all of this. They were just loving me. I mean, just flat out crazy loving me. And I looked out in that park, and it, uh, I still remember to this day, it was speckled like some sort of a idyllic Monet painting with all these other parents loving their kids as much as my parents loved me. And it occurred to me right then and there that, oh my goodness, this world, I never realized it, but this world is home to literally billions of equally precious, just as precious as little 14-year-old Rick, equally precious children of God. And for me, to be burdened with that little bit of understanding has been a wonderful blessing because it just reminds me of the richness of this planet. And it makes it so easy to see that we're all family. And again, it comes back to that very simple appreciation of, of our relationship with our, with our Heavenly Father. I mean, this is our creation. We're all children of God. And when we travel, we're celebrating the family. And we're thinking about how do you live in that space without actually leaving home? How do we do that at home? Um, it's, it's not safe for most of us to travel the globe right now. Um, there are safe ways to do it when you need to. Uh, there are, are ways to experience the, the joy of connecting to other cultures that don't require you to get on an airplane or uh, take a long car ride. We all, most of us long for that opportunity, and we also know that uh, unlike Rick Steves, and Rick is so good at, at acknowledging his privilege that I'm not talking out of school, um, he had parents who were able to allow him to travel across the world. Um, and many of us don't have those resources. I will say that God has a way of creating opportunities for people even when they don't have resources, if they're open to those opportunities. Um, our, our son, David, who is now 30-ish, uh, uh, when he was 13, a few years younger than Rick Steves, um, I got to take him uh, to Africa uh, uh, on a trip that, uh, or to Uganda, rather. Um, I thought Africa because we ended up in a uh, nature preserve that, uh, a wildlife reserve, that at one point the baboons and the elephants had literally taken over. It was like, it was like going into the Jungle Book movie uh, where King Louis was uh, swinging around inside the hotel. Uh, they were no longer inside the hotel, the baboons, but there, there were as many of you all in, in our worship gathering this morning uh, just hovering around all the time. Uh, pretty tame, but still wild animals. And uh, the group that got there before we did, uh, 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 an elephant had been uh, cooling itself off in the swimming pool. <laughs> uh, but that was in Uganda, and how in the world could a uh, pastor from northern Michigan uh, with really hardly any resources and a family of five um, give a kid that opportunity? Well, the church helped that make that happen. Uh, we were part of a, a church community at the time that wanted to help provide medical services in other parts of the world, and Kathy and I were able to go to Guatemala at that time, or El Salvador, I'm sorry, um, since, uh, since then, friends of ours have been to Guatemala. <laughs> um, but, uh, and we were able to go to Africa. And those opportunities, if you have them for your family, are so life-changing to experience the rest of the world and not just be stuck in the great white north, right? Um, our daughter, Kristen, so Kathy was telling someone this story last week, um, approached us at one point when we were staying with Kathy's family we didn't even have enough money to have our own home at that point. And, Chris, and Kristen looked up from the picnic table and said, can I go to Chile? And we said, oh, sure, honey, someday uh, uh, that might be possible. She said, no, in two weeks. Uh, my friend is going, her dad's a, a national, um, and all I have to pay for is the ticket. <laughs> They'll pay for everything else. And we said, oh, honey. There's just we, no way we can come up with $1,500 for a ticket to Chile. And she said, I have it in the bank. <laughs> she, this 14-year-old girl had been saving her own money. 
and she was able to take that trip. Now, it spoiled her for skiing. She learned to ski in the Andes Mountains, where it takes an hour and a half to get down from the top. <laughs> and she came back and went once to Boyne Mountain. <laughs> and said, that's not really skiing. That's, oof, you're done. Um, but my point is that, that even families who don't necessarily have that kind of wealth that makes it possible to travel on a regular basis, um, if you can't get those opportunities, there's Raven Hill that you can just drive to in East Jordan. Um, and go with other families if you need some help with transportation. And there's Green Sky Hill. Someone mentioned earlier, uh, Sarah was talking about this as a place where you can come and be present in creation with a different part of, of our daily experience than we even uh, experience in downtown Charlevoix or Petoskey or Boyne City or, where, or Eastport or wherever we come from. Uh, yesterday I came out to make sure I had a rain plan in case it was going to be raining at this time. And Sue Bice was out here with the, one of the biggest dogs I've ever seen uh, with a little ball tosser and she said, uh, I said, hey, do you need to get inside? She said, no, I just, this is, I can't control this animal on a leash. It's her daughter's dog. Uh, but I, so I just bring him out here periodically because I can throw the ball and he has places to run. And she was connecting with this family, this four-legged family member uh, here at Green Sky Hill. And she assured me that she encourages him to go to the bathroom long distances away from here. Uh, so I don't know how she does that, but. My point is that if we stop and think for a minute about the most exciting travel experiences that we've ever been able to have, and it would be really fun. Uh, we're, we're not doing coffee hour inside yet. We're keeping our distance even outside. Uh, uh, the, the recommendation currently is that if you're in an enclosed space, no matter uh, what your vaccination status, and I think almost all of us are vaccinated, I'm very thankful to hear that some of our Green Sky folks who were a little reluctant are now vaccinated, so I'm really thankful for that too. I know it's a huge and difficult choice for many of our friends. Thank you for doing that when you're able to uh, protect everyone else. But the recommendation currently is even if you're vaccinated, but if you're in an enclosed space to, to mask again. Um, so we have to deal with those kinds of limits right now. And one of the ways that we can do that is by calling on the most exciting, most enjoyable, and perhaps the most challenging travel experiences that each of us have had. And when we have an opportunity to share those with one another, I can't wait to hear them. It, it might just be that you finally walked to the top of the Mixaba Trail in Charlevoix and saw all of the beauty of that um, wooded trail uh, just minutes away from many of our homes. And maybe for the first time you got to experience that as if you were a visitor. Um, I think this perspective will make sense to most watching and most here this morning. Kathy and I were out at, um, at Fisherman's Island last week and enjoying that amazing beach at the end of that long stretch when you drive into the state park. Um, this big area, this cove where unlike the rest of Lake Michigan that I know, there are no rocks when you enter into, I don't want to tell everybody this because I don't want everybody to swarm to that beach. <laughs> But really, if you can have that experience, it is an amazing experience in Northern Michigan. And I have uh, some of my vacation time and my study week to plan. Uh, it looks like as last year that it's all gonna happen at one time uh, because of the unique needs of doing worship together during the pandemic. And we're looking forward to it, but instead of planning weeks of travel, we've had to reframe and say, well, how are we gonna travel here? How are we gonna just stay here and travel? And we're out in the lake in Lake Michigan. It's this long, beautiful sandbar that's warm for hundreds of yards. And I said, Kath, let's just imagine that we are gonna be able to travel. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you wanna be? Tell me, tell me about this place that you would wanna be. And she you know, was bobbing in the water. She looked up at me and she said, oh, I, I would just really love a place with a lot of trees, just so many trees and some fresh water. If I could get, you know, miles of water um, and maybe a little sandy beach, uh, but not too hot, a little breezy, no poisonous animals, uh, the un an unlikely uh, earthquake or tornado or hurricane. I, 
And then she stood up in the water and said, I'm here. <laughs> we are here where we would travel to if we could choose any place in the world to travel. And we're really, really thankful for that. So then how do we share that with our neighbors who can't experience that? We have uh, family and friends in cities where, and, in, and on farms, uh, not here in northern Michigan, where they can't get enough water, where the forest is burning all around them. Uh, we have friends in Haiti where the earthquake has, um, has killed 2,000 people and people are, are now um, suffering from new infections that they haven't been able to get treated yet because they can't get the medical people there in a timely way. We have our friends and our neighbors and our families in Afghanistan. How do we connect with those loved ones when we can't go physically be with them? Well, pre-technology, you know, now we have FaceTime and Messenger Video and uh, Google Meet and Zoom and so many ways that even people with very few resources have access to that technology and we can literally see them and talk to them no matter where they are in the world, but not always. And before that technology, before the cell phone, before any landlines, We've always had this practice of prayer. To be able to find a quietness in our own spirit, in our own hearts, sometimes together as we're gathered this morning, and sometimes apart, to take these loved ones before the loving presence of God who cares even more for them than we do. Our question is, can we experience this this hope for a future, for a new healthy possibility, even if we can't physically travel. We ended last week's service with this note from Walter Brueggemann, the wonderful Old Testament scholar, who was talking about the, the news of Easter. The news of Easter is that in the resurrection of Jesus, God has broken all the vicious cycles of deathliness in which the, world's find, the world finds itself. And we were focused on Isaiah 65 last week, and Brueggemann said the lyric of Isaiah 65 anticipates that weary old heaven, jaded old earth, and conflicted old Jerusalem, all will be broken open by the power of God to new healthy possibility. I don't know if it's just because of the context of traveling, but perhaps you've experienced this. We get in the car, we head out, and there's a feeling of new possibility. There's a sense of some new adventure. My entire family will tell you that every single time, every single time that we took a big family adventure like that, and we called it a maze family adventure, and we'd pile in whatever minivan we had at the time, and we'd head out, and every single time, something disastrous happened. <laughs> we, we, we were reminiscing the other day about how we got halfway to SeaWorld in Ohio. Our kids were so excited to be able to go to SeaWorld in Ohio. It wasn't even halfway. We got to Standish or someplace uh, in the middle of Michigan. And billows of smoke started pouring out of the front of the van. And it turned out that the whole block had blown up and that van was not traveling. I mean, we got to a... We got to an exit, we got to a hotel, and it was just done. And we we had to stay the night. Oh, and I broke my foot on a handicap ramp right before we left. Uh, so I was so I was in a cast, and <laughs> we we got into this really junky hotel that I don't know if it's even still there on the exit. And we're walking down the hallway, hauling all the kids and all the bags. And Kristen, the middle child, was mumbling under her breath. Rebecca is never going to want to take a vacation ever again. This is the worst possible vacation ever. <laughs> Kathy and I already were saying, oh, honey, we're just getting started. <laughs> we're going to have so many adventures. And even those disasters are now stories in our family that remind us of the immense grace and love of God. Our connection with each other and our connection with the people that came to rescue us. Uh, so how do we do that? How do we bring that, that spirit of new healthy possibility into our present reality if, and travel, live as if we're traveling? We have a clue from 
our gospel text. And I'll conclude my thoughts with this and invite Rick Steves to share one more of his experiences with us. In John chapter 15, verses 9 through 12, um, the word, this is a note from my New, Inter uh, New Interpreter's Study Bible, the word abide or remain, in Greek it's meno, um, M-E-N-O, like not meno like the fish, but it sounds kind of like meno. Um, it expresses the central theme of this whole chapter of the Gospel of John, the relationship of God and Jesus with one another and with the community is one of presence and mutuality. So think about that when you're trying to find ways to travel from home. Presence and mutuality. And the vine imagery in this same note symbolizes how the life of the Christian community is shaped by love and intertwined with the abiding presence of God and Jesus. So how do we travel as, as if we're really leaving home but bring that spirit of new opportunity and new life into our daily life and our relationships with other people. We remember the presence and the mutuality of the Trinity. We remember their love for one another, pouring out Father upon the Son and the Son upon the Spirit and the Spirit upon that, that perfect community that existed before all of creation and has invited us to be in relationship with the presence and the mutuality of God. And then, as we make those daily decisions, how am I going to react? How am I going to respond to the difficulties and the joys that are facing us this day? How about being shaped by love and intertwined with the abiding presence of God? That's going to look a little different for each of us, and my encouragement to you is to find a moment, if not on Sunday morning, together with us, and we love it when you're able to gather, some time where you can regularly recenter yourself. First, as we've learned, to decenter yourself, to remind yourself that you are not, in fact, God, nor are you individually the center of the universe. And then recenter on that mutuality and presence of a loving God. However that works for you, uh, those body prayers that we've learned together, other practices of mindfulness that will remind you that you are loved, will remind you that no matter what the day looks like, <laughs> no matter what the latest COVID-19 report says, you are loved and you have love to share with the world. And how will you walk with Jesus as you seek to do that? Rick, when he was older than his first 14-year-old self and traveling with his family, uh, started a practice of mindfulness that perhaps will help each of us as we uh, continue to ask, how do we bring this hope for a new life into our daily life, traveling from home? And, and you have an authenticity, not only because of your experiences, you, you have you have literally uh, put yourself in these sort of case studies. You, you've lived it. And so uh, you're not speaking from the point of view of a researcher, though you do research. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that brings to life these stories because they are yours. And they connect uh, us, the, your audience, with uh, people from around the world. So. You're very believable, Rick, and uh, I think that's important for those of us who want to uh, offer a witness to others about our travels and, and how our lives have been transformed. So I think that's mm -hmm. very important. You know, before we get, give that book away, Tammy, I just, I just think a prerequisite for what you were just talking about there is traveling on purpose, traveling intentionally. When, when I was a kid, I had that journal <laughs> that you saw in that last clip. It was a hardback yes. journal, it's 40 years old now. And I remember, I, I parsed out how many pages I had for, for a 60 day trip or whatever. And I wrote one page of where I am today in my outlook, in my faith, in my world. And then the next page was gonna be where I am after this, this trip. And then I skipped that page and I had 60 days of traveling and then the plane home, I would fill in that page number two 
which talks about how this trip was transformational. <laughs> I've never explained this to anybody. I've never even um, verbalized it. But, but that there was the definition, I think, of intentional travel. I was traveling on purpose. I was traveling wanting to shake me up and let me come back together and fly home with this new perspective. And I'm so thankful for that. And it's something that anybody can have. And that would be the mark, I think, of a good trip. Early in the pandemic, um, and to be completely transparent, it's because I was terrified, uh, mostly of someone else in my family getting sick and getting hurt uh, more than I was worried about my own health. I started a practice, it's so simple, it might even feel silly to you or to someone else, but I started a practice of rolling out of bed in the morning, and before I did anything else, I would just feel my feet on the ground, uh, in, inside, of course, I wasn't outside. I, I, before I got dressed, before I do anything else, I would just notice that I was, my feet were touching the ground, and I would say out loud two things. I'm alive. And then I would take a long, slow breath. I learned the nasal breathing from Pastor Sarah. I'm breathing. <laughs> and I have just said that to myself every morning since the beginning of the pandemic as a way to begin the day not in futility or hopelessness. I'm alive. I'm breathing. Thank you, It's the next thing I would say. And I still do that practice each morning. Steve, uh, Rick Steves has encouraged me to consider a new practice over the next several weeks, and I wanna invite you to do your version of this. When we wake up in the morning, whatever the rest of your morning routine is, can you imagine for a minute that you're not in your own normal familiar space? That even though you're home, uh, that you are actually in a new space that you are going to go discover. And then when you leave your bedroom and head out into the world, whether that involves staying in your home all day long or actually going out into the neighborhood or running errands or whatever else you get to do, try to see all the spaces around you as if you were traveling, as if you've not seen them every day, because that's what's happening to us. When we make that same commute, every day for years, <laughs> when we have the same routines for our breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and, and those are really wonderful and a, a way to feel at home, imagine doing those as if you were in somebody else's home, <laughs> visiting in a new community that you've never seen before. And then when you walk out your front door, actually notice the house that's right next door to you. <laughs> see if you can see something in that house that you never saw before, a plant that they have in their front yard or some symbol of their uh, sense of family and community that they have in their uh, space. And you can learn as if you were traveling. So that's how I'm gonna approach the next several weeks. Uh, as we close with prayer and song this morning, uh, I uh, asked you to consider those whom and uh, about which we should lift up in prayer as we sing, because returning home is not the end of the journey. Returning to business as usual too quickly can rob us of important moments of integrating what we've experienced into our hearts and knowing what implications it can have for our lives. I hope that the journaling we've done in our hearts and minds and sometimes literally on paper has inspired you to perhaps continue keeping a journal if you don't already. A travel journal can remind us of uh, that each time we pick it up that life is a journal, a, a journey. Uh, I, I never made the connection in those two words before. Life is a journal. Um, whether we leave home for extended periods of time or not, let's center our hearts and reflect this morning on what this deeper look at travel as a spiritual act has opened for us. And as we have been doing, we'll start with a musical prayer, and then we'll spend a few uh, seconds, a minute maybe, journaling either with pen or paper, if you have it with you, or quietly in the recesses of our hearts and minds, and I'll give you prompts for that when we get there. Let us pray, Namada. <laughs> Shut up.
brought out people or things that we should be remembering in our prayers this morning. Doreen Wilson. Doreen Wilson. journal or on paper if you wish, um, I invite you to consider these questions. What feels important to remember beyond this worship series that can enrich the journey of your life each day? Have you felt a shift in some attitude about the world? Is there something that is calling you because of this journey? And I will post those reflections on our page after church this morning. The Lord's Prayer. Nusnan spimming ein. Manu dat chitoin gadeg dishne kasu. Dugmau in the bit gushnum gadeneand mund shuabat amak king. Dvishko udishpin. Me shanam sununga gishka kagemi jang. Yeah, a boy in the snang and batage, she have sitting in on him. As a boy in my dwa, I give a medjil dog, a jay. Gagonishish can't get my good man dog, sonning, the bugam was snang this. Unje a ma, em jay, he wish. He in ma, the band down. Ogama win, gexke elson. Amen. 
there was some confusion last week about which baskets are for which purpose uh, because we were talking about the importance of, uh, uh, or uh, we were talking about uh, offering as a direct action of love. And this basket, the picnic basket, is what we use for um, our UMCOR offerings, and that's the United Methodist Committee on Relief. So these offerings, usually our pocket change offerings we talk about around here, go directly to disaster relief globally. And a quarter of these funds, uh, the treasurer sets aside for our local food pantry. Uh, the round baskets are for the uh, operating ministry expenses of Green Sky Hill, including uh, the staff salaries and uh, the costs of having a building and a church and uh, helping our community. So this is for the regular church offering, and this basket is for UMCOR. Doxology in Ojibwe uh, from the front of your Green Sky Hill hymnal. two verses in English. Cuando crece la alegría y nos inunda, cuando dicen nuestros labios la verdad, cuando amamos el sentir de los sencillos, va Dios mismo en nuestro mismo caminar. Cuando abunda el bien y llena los hogares, cuando un hombre donde hay guerra pone paz, cuando hermano le llamamos el extraño, va a Dios mismo en nuestro mismo camino. Hear the words as we're singing them uh, as a continuation of our prayer for a new life, traveling as if we're on the road while we stay at home.
That text is based on earlier in the Gospel of John, just a couple of chapters before our Gospel reading for this morning, where Jesus first said to everyone, love one another as I have loved you. Uh, abide in my love, stay in my love, walk this road with me. And the way the world will know that you're doing that is your love for one another. We'll sing Coming Home as a conclusion to our benediction. I invite you to stand as you move into the journey of your life. May you love the journey as a spiritual act, always expanding your horizons, inviting you to travel beyond your preconceptions, and encouraging you to ever embrace the infinite delight of this earth and its beings. And may the Creator continue your unfolding the Christ accompany your deeper knowing, the Spirit enliven your growing until one day we all gather in the kingdom of love. Let's go love this world desperately in need of love.